Well, hello, beautiful ones. It's Stacy here, the head Vixen of the Vixen Academy. And I want to thank you so much for being with me here today. And, you know, with this podcast, I'm, I'm probably going to be doing this for um, a couple more, whatever um, inspiration I get, messages I'm sharing as I'm processing the passing of my dad. And there are so many things about this that are taking me by surprise. I think more specifically is um, the big healing and the closure and the connection that I'm having with my dad right now is just so deep and profound and quite frankly, very unexpected. I mean, when when you have anyone that passes that's close to you, you're not sure how you're going to react to them no longer being here. You may have thoughts in your head or even in your heart or whatever that may be in your emotions. But when it actually happens, you know, you just don't know. And this is really actually taking me all by surprise. Um in a beautiful way, in a very, very beautiful way. And so this is actually um, helping me to heal and to process. And I want to thank you so much for giving me the space in which to do this and sharing whatever insight and wisdom that I am receiving um, as I'm navigating this time, especially with my relationship with my dad, you know, that father-daughter relationship uh, that is there because it does, whether you believe it or not, whether it's a cliche or not, you know, the relationships that you do have with your parents, both positive and or negative, whether they're in your life or, you're, or they're not in your life, it does affect how you navigate all of your relationships moving forward, right? Whether they're romantic relationships, whether they're relationships with your kids, whether they're relationships with your siblings or your friends, other family members, your work associates, it has a domino effect in all of it. And so the, the messages, or should I say, my dad has started to speak to me from the other side and what he's been sharing with me has brought me to tears because you know, in, in our tradition, when someone passes on, and I believe I may have shared this in the first, in the first podcast about my dad's passing, but you know, they go through a life review when they're on the other side. And it's not a life review in terms of, you know, chastising necessarily or punishment. It's not that the life review is they really get to see how they affect it other people, both positive and negative. And they get to feel, you know, exp you know, they get to feel those same emotions that they caused in other people. And my dad is, I guess you would say my dad is very mortified by how his behavior uh, affected those closest, especially his, his children. And I'll, I'll get into a podcast at another time of how I know all that, right? I just want to keep it focused here, but I do want to just want to preface that a little bit. And so, you know, when they make their transition, um, we have an ancestral altar and Paying respect to our ancestors, those are family that have crossed over to the other side, is a very big thing in, in my culture, in my heritage. And so I was looking for an appropriate picture that I wanted to put up on the wall so that he can join the ancestors. And the picture that I selected is the one that you see on the cover of this podcast. That was my dad in September of 1966. And that was a Polaroid. <laughs> and that's the image of him that's on the ancestral altar. And it's a Polaroid from 1966. 
and looking all snazzy and everything else like that. I, I swear I, I get the, I, I think I get the dressing thing. For, I get it on both sides of my family and stuff. But um, my dad was a looker, let me tell you. And I put that picture up right underneath his grandmother, my great grandmother. And I loved her dearly. I was very fortunate to know my great grandmother for as long as I did. She lived to be 103 years old. <laughs> and so um, I knew her also as a child, as well as an adult, which is uh, a rare blessing. But his grandmother, that is who raised him because um, his mom and dad weren't there. And my dad have had a PTSD from that dynamic, which is also another podcast for another time. So it was underneath my great grandmother. And this is what I asked her. I said to her that if my dad is willing for him to make amends and make right by the four children that he left behind that he didn't have time for when he was alive and he just lived his life. And I said to her, I asked her if he is willing to help him, guide him, and for having accountability. And because even when they're on the other side, they still have to be willing <laughs> to, to do these things. You don't demand, you, you ask. And so that's what I asked. And then after that, I uh, was getting in my car so I can run and go buy a picture frame um, so I can place him up on with the ancestors. And when I got in my car, um, this song came on, or should I say a track came on that I listened to. And the lyrics of this song that I've heard so many times, but on this one time, these, these specific lyrics came in loud and clear above everything else that was on that music track over the over the, the 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 other beats and sounds and everything. I heard these words loud and clear. And because of that, I knew that this was coming directly from my dad. There wasn't a shadow of a doubt after I heard these words that it was him answering directly the request and the ask I put out to my great grandmother, which was his grandmother who raised him. And this is what I heard from the lyrics. It said this, please hear me out. Trust that I will never let you down. That is what I heard. And the one thing is, and I knew it was specifically from my dad, from that very first sentence where it said, please hear me out. Trust, because when my dad was alive, I did not trust him. I would be like, yeah, whatever. So he had to say, please hear me out. And everybody right there, that example. And if you know anything about me, make sure you have a piece of paper and pen so you can take down some notes. Okay. Because we're definitely going to be dropping some Buddha wisdom here. Okay. But what happens is that one sentence, please hear me out. Trust that I will never let you down. That is our modern day version of Moses and the burning bush. This is how your questions get answered. This is how your intentions get answered. This is how your prayers get answered. But the question is, are you listening? Are you listening? Because I get asked all the time, well, how do you trust the message? The shockingly enough, the, the, the answer is quite easy, but whether people do it or not, that is the defining moment, because this is how you trust the message. Everybody by observing the synchronicities and patterns, because this is how the universe speaks to us all the time. Look at how you may be thinking about someone. And then boom, something may come across your social media screen that has something to do with them. 
The next day they may call you or you may get a text from them and then you're like, oh my God, I was just thinking about you. That is the universe answering that thought. That is all of that. It's not a fluke, <laughs> right? It's not a fluke. So by observing the synchronicities and patterns, this is how the universe speaks to us all the time because this is how humans learn. And let me explain that. Think about it. When you went to school or if you were learning a new skill for your job, you didn't just do it one time and all of a sudden you were proficient, right? What you did is you had to continue to practice, 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 repeat, 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 repeat until you became proficient because then it was embedded in your brain and it became like muscle memory. And then the skill became, that's just what you do, right? This is how humans learn. And so this is how the universe teaches us. This is how the universe is speaking to you through those synchronicities, through patterns, through sometimes what's called call and response. Call and response would be that message from my dad. I asked a question and then boom, I got an answer through a song. That's call and response, all right? But what happens is many times people will say, and you may have said this yourself, why does this pattern keep showing up? This feels familiar. Well, that was a coincidence. That was just a fluke. These are all statements of seeing a synchronicity and recognizing a pattern, yet not reflecting and taking in the message that the universe is trying to communicate to you. So guess what? It goes bye-bye. For now, at least. For now, at least. It goes bye-bye. Now, if it is uh, something, a message that you are really uh, supposed to heed, you will get that message over and over and over again. That is the pattern because the universe is saying, take this direction, take this step. And the reason why you're getting this information to everybody is to actually make your life easier. Is to help you make decisions. Is to help, you know, give you answers to your questions so that you can take inspired action and move forward in your life or heal a situation from your past. So here's my question. How exactly do you think your questions and intentions are supposed to be answered? How do you think the universe is supposed to respond to you? Because if you're not heeding the synchronicities, if you're not heeding the call and response, like the message that my dad spoke to me, right? The It's obvious the universe is talking to you, but you're expecting something specific. You're expecting it to look a particular way. And if it looks this particular way, then you'll accept that answer. Why is that? And what answer are you looking for? You know, you're trying to tell the universe, I will only accept this answer if you give this to me in this way. And guess what? You miss exactly what you asked for. You missed the blessing that you were asking for because of being prescriptive and not being open. But most people's prayers or questions aren't answered because we don't hear the voice of the universe that comes through people, not necessarily through a burning bush, Moses isn't the only person that has that ability. We all have that ability because we're all children of the universe. Whatever it is that comprises your universe. I don't care if it's a spotted elephant. It doesn't matter. Whatever is sacred to you. Whatever is sacred to you. So I put that request to my dad and he answered almost immediately through the lyrics to a song. Please hear me out. Trust that I will never let you down. I was in my car, my eyes filled with tears. I took a deep breath 
because I was just in shock by that. And I said to myself, you know what? What does it hurt by me listening to him now? Because he's wanting to talk to me now. What does it hurt? This is heal. He is trying to make amends. This is a healing. By ignoring this, I'm continuing the suffering and the pain from the past. And I don't want to go there because it's unnecessary. It is in the past. I can't change. No one can change what happened in the past. But what happens is you have an effect in the present, which determines the future that you will have. So whatever you do here in the present, that will affect your future. But there is nothing you can change about the past. So that is wasted time. You can learn from the past as to not to repeat it. Not to repeat what caused the suffering. That is how you can learn from the past. But holding on to the pain and the victim of past situations, that is what's keeping you stuck. And my dad didn't want me stuck anymore in that pain. Because me not being stuck in the pain also releases his soul from the trauma that was caused. So you see how this is doing a healing for both of us. And oh, the conversation didn't stop there. <laughs> the conversation didn't stop there. And there was a second conversation that my dad had with me a couple of days later. And I'm actually going to do that in a separate podcast. But in this one, I just really want you to pay attention about how the universe is answering your questions and giving you a healing through people, places, things, synchronicities. And how when you open up your heart and you allow yourself to let go of the pain of the past, that is when you can hear the healing that you say that you want. And that you can step into this healing that you say that you want. Otherwise, you are still dealing with the shenanigans of the ego mind that is keeping you in the suffering. So it's your choice. You either choose the path of suffering by holding on to the pain of the past and wanting to be right, wanting the vindication and all that other stuff. Or you can choose the path of healing and happiness. By being open to a new perspective of information that you're being given so that you can think of things differently in the present so that you can have a different future, a happier future, a healed future that is void of high anxiety, that is void of sadness, depression, trauma, PTSD, all of the things that my dad was dealing with. And so this is his gift to me, which is my gift to you if you choose to see it that way. So with this, everybody, be open to the messages that you receive because it is literally giving you what you want. It just may look a little bit different than you expect. And with that, everyone, thank you for allowing me and giving me this space. We are complete and namaste.